Hey everyone, welcome to Eliza OS Workshop. I'm Nasita and I'm, I'll be your guide as we dive into the world of Eliza OS, which is an innovative open source operating system built for speed, flexibility, and scalability. Most importantly, it's actually built to be yours. Now, who here loves creating things that push the boundaries of imagination? If that's you, you're in the right place. Today, we're going to explore how Eliza OS can become your go-to place for playing with and creating amazing things. Whether you're building something you've always dreamt of or just experimenting with a new idea, regardless of which it is, Eliza OS can help fuel your creativity. All right, so let's get started. So, so uh, you might be wondering, like, what is Eliza OS? Well, that's a great question. Uh, so Eliza OS is a lightweight, modular, and fast operating system designed to make your AI agent development and bring your dreams to reality. It's open source, which means you can tweak it, modify it, and create your own unique solution that fits your requirements. And if you're wondering, well, why should I use Eliza OS versus all the other uh, options that are available? Well, we're open source, which means this fundamentally allows a lot more progress and allows folks to be able to contribute, folks like yourself. In terms of customizability, it has customization at its core. You can curate your agent to have the personality and tone that fits your needs. And you can have this agent across various platforms maintain that exact personality, which is kind of neat if you think about it. So think of it as your perfect foundation for your next big project. Whether you're building something for personal use or research project or something else, Eliza OS could be the place to get started. All right, so now we're actually moving to slide two. Um, a really quick disclaimer, the reason I give that is, so today being April 9th, 2025, I, a few of the things I might share may have evolved depending on if you're looking at this recording at some future date, um, partly because we're working on, you know, continue to evolve the version that we have. Um, so Eliza OS is currently has an original version, which is the one uh, you'll be using, as well as we have a beta version out currently. Naturally, you may be wondering, well, which one should I use? For, that pur for the purpose of this hackathon, I'm recommending folks use the original version. You're going to be using GitHub documentation and following instructions there. If you're still curious about the beta version that's out and are keen to start using it, I'd still highly recommend using the original version at this stage because beta, as the name suggests, is still work in progress. And we'd like to make sure that you're having a smooth experience. That's one of the primary reasons for suggesting to use the current version. And most of the plugins are yet to be migrated again as of April 9th. Um, so the functionality that would be available to you is a bit more limited on the beta versus the original version. All right, cool. Now let's actually move on to, you know, overview of Eliza OS. Um, so I tend to think of it as, you know, different components that make up the framework at a super high level view perspective. You'll want to think about, you know, what type of agent personality and tone I'd like to give my agent, depending on my use case. And you'll probably also want to think about, well, what, you know, how do I choose where I'd want to launch it? Again, it, it, it's all going to depend on the use case because depending on what you're trying to do, maybe it's it's the right answer for you to run it locally, in which case you're okay to use, um, you know, a specific LLM um, and, you know, all of those details. Or if you're actually looking to have something like a, a social agent that is interacting with people, maybe you're going to end up choosing you know, Discord as your platform or some other Slack or um, any of those things. Another one you're probably thinking through is, hey, like, you know, what are all the different uh, data sources and things that I could add to my RAG file? So that's another thing in terms of, you know, what type of information do I want to provide my agent in terms of context? And the fourth one being, well, you know, you want to choose your LLM because that's kind of the 
what makes the whole thing come together is how I think of it. Again, I'm, I'm trying to maybe oversimplify here, so bear with me. Um, so Eliza OS is compatible with most of the LLMs out there. Um, so choose which one you want, depending on your own preference. And once you've chosen that, I'd suggest getting the appropriate API key and keeping it handy as you go through the next set of steps, because you'll need it. Another important thing to be mindful of is that we have lots of resources available. One other category is plugins, briefly touching on this, because think of this as all the different functionality that could be available to you and by extension, your agent, because all these plugins are currently hosted in, the, in their appropriate GitHub rep repos um, by the folks that would have built them. And they are pointed to what's called a registry. This is the place you're going to go to. We'll, we'll share the link below. Basically, this registry will be your single source of truth in terms of finding all the different plugins that might be available and compatible with Eliza OS today. So keep an eye out for that. OK, on to the next one. All right, so this is where we get a little bit nitty gritty. Um, but even before we get a bit nitty gritty, um, first thing is depending on where you're starting from. So let's say you are already a developer and know your way around. Fantastic. This is probably likely like a, a two second skim through. Uh, but if you're someone who's maybe starting on a slightly on the beginner scale of things, this might be a few more steps. So we just want to cover this. Some of the key things that we want to make sure um, you're mindful of is to have Python, we that's one of the prerequisites, Node.js, make sure you have 23 plus version um, and you know PNPM, uh, whichever code editor of your choice, again, Cursor or Visual Studio, and there's many other options that are available. Uh, in fact, uh, if you happen to be uh, a Windows user, let's say, then you're actually going to need WSL2 as well, in addition to all the other ones up top. But if you're a Mac user, WSL is not required. Um, just make sure you have the, all the other ones. One of the hiccups I know I sometimes get caught in is I need to make sure that my node version is 23 plus. For some reason, I sometimes, you know, my um, terminal switches that over and all of a sudden I start seeing errors and I'm just like, what's going on? Um, usually, I think making sure that my version, I'm on the right version, helps kind of move things along and, you know, smoother journey. Um, there are also some really wonderful tutorials that I've really enjoyed. And I know a lot of the community and like other builders enjoy them as well. And I often use that because you know they tend to be quite beginner friendly. Again, depends depending on where you're starting. So what I'd say is check out the Eliza OS developer YouTube channel. We also have um, a how to playlist with some of uh, my favorites, honestly. So do take a look at that and check that out. Um, we also have a Windows setup tutorial for Windows users for the WSL uh, component. So want to make sure that you're all taken care of. All right. Now that we've got the prerequisites covered, let's move on to more fun things. All right, so you're probably wondering, actually on the right-hand side here, there's some of the tutorials that will walk you through step-by-step, -step, um, which will make your life a lot easier, um, I think in my experience anyways. Okay, so super high level. Uh, you're thinking, okay, well, how do I start this? So to start building on Eliza OS, the first thing you'll want to do is clone Eliza OS. So going, please go to the GitHub repo, Eliza OS GitHub repo, which will have these steps, including these commands here. Uh, I've just highlighted a few here, but depending on, you know, how your path kind of progresses, like that will be your go-to for uh, making sure you're using the initial version of Eliza OS. All right, so item one that I want to call it once you have cloned Eliza OS and have it running is, well, before you start running, is you want to make sure you set up your environment variables. This is the LLM part from the original, uh, from one of the previous slides we talked about. So let's say I chose Anthropic, then I need to set up um, 
my .env file with the appropriate key. Um, one trick I also use sometimes is I have two separate API keys for two different types of LLMs. This way, at least my thinking is, um, one of them is my backup, just in case I, you know, for whatever reasons. One fun thing I've noticed is, regardless of the order sometimes, if I have um, OpenAI and Anthropic, I have seen that it does have a preference for Anthropic over the other, um, but that's just a detail. All right, so you set up your uh, .env file, which will get you know the LLM component taken care of. Now, what I call item number two, which is the more exciting part to me personally, um, this is where you customize your agent character personality and tone. You can do this by tweaking your dot character file and providing examples is one really good way I find that you know you can really curate the agent to hit the right um, tone and uh, pattern that sort of stuff. So I generally really like providing speech patterns or like examples if there's a specific type of humor I want to uh, fold into that. Um, the world is truly your oyster in how you choose to curate your perfect um, character for this agent. Okay, awesome. Next step is, well, there's lots of resources like I suggested. So one of the first ones is we do have a dedicated builders chat for Telegram um, and Discord. Because as you go along, you'll want to have you know, you're going to need technical support or maybe you just want to talk to someone about onboarding. This is a really good resource to um, kind of keep on your radar and make sure you can leverage that because we don't want you to feel like you're alone in this journey. You can definitely there's lots of us and there's lots of folks in the community and builders. Um, so please do use that. Another resource I think would be really helpful for people to be aware of is the event calendar. So this is a public facing Google calendar that has a list of all the different events that are happening at any time of the day in any time zone. Um, so that could be like an AI agent dev school if that's happening, or if it's just a, uh, you know, a builder demo that we're showcasing. This is more just to get a better sense of what is Eliza OS and you know, how, like what are all the really cool things um, that are happening, maybe some of these will pique your interest and maybe you'll decide to join one of them. This is also a really great way, I find, to meeting others that might be on the same journey as you. And in some ways, like you get to exchange some notes or, you know, it's just fun. So event calendar, whether, you know, some of these are virtual, some of these are IRL, but at least the really cool thing is you could just overlay this onto your own existing calendar. And that's the part I personally really enjoy because then on any given day, let's say I decide, oh, actually I have extra time. I wonder if there's any events that are happening. I could just look it up, which simplifies a lot of, you know, having to figure out, well, is there something there? Like when might it be? Oh, you know, is it past all of that? So this all removes it. So event calendar to keep an eye on that. The QR code here, if you scan it, I'll take you to the link there. So please do take a look at that. And this is the Builder Demos and Tutorials YouTube that I mentioned a couple of times. So this is a good place to get a sense of what types of you know plugin tutorials are available currently and what uh, type of agents have been built. So there's some demos and there's some tutorials that are, you know, already there, but this is an ongoing uh, or a constantly evolving um, channel. So, you know, those will continue to evolve. We also, as we come across how to videos that folks build out that we find are very helpful, we like to, you know, pin them there. So then they're all in, in that playlist. Uh, so then for anybody else starting new, you don't have to go through several of them to figure out which ones have been helpful. So this is at least just a starting point. Um, so please do take a look at that. Again, the QR code here allows you to go directly to that YouTube channel um, and feel free to explore. I also find it kind of helpful to for 
inspiration sometimes just to get a sense of like what's available, what's not. So this is a, a good starting point as well. And this is a, a general overview of the ecosystem. Uh, there's lots of different plugins from a lot of different teams. Some of these you'll probably recognize. And, you know, there's lots of other folks that we're actively working with from like an Eliza OS standpoint. So just to give you an overview of this. Amazing. So again, if you didn't get a chance to join that Telegram uh, group, please do. It is a dedicated place. We have set up especially for folks that are doing lots of different hackathons around because we want to make sure you're getting the support that you need okay perfect uh we'll try to make sure that we are providing all the links that are, i've shared and kind of walked through today um we'll also share them in the bio teams uh discord so it's also accessible there these are all definitely accessible in the telegram chat that this uh qr code directs you to so please do take a look at it that's all I have for now. It's time to start building uh, and we're super excited to see what beautiful things you folks really bring to life over the period of this hackathon. Thank you.